Time to start playing around with Docker. So I've prepared some commands, which we will go through one by one and see what each of them do. Let's open up a terminal window and get right into it. The three most important command commands in Docker are Docker container, Docker image, and Docker run. By themselves, these commands don't do anything except tell you how to use them. Uh, you need to add more options in order for them to actually do something. Let's start by seeing what images and containers we have on this machine. So in order to list images, we can run docker image ls. As you can see, by default, docker comes with the hello world image, which we have run just previously. Now, if you also do docker container ls, you can see that I have no containers running on this machine. In order to run the Docker hello world image, all we have to do is write docker run hello dash world. And we get the out output we expected. Now let's try something a little bit more complex. Let's try and run a Python image and run a very simple Python file. First of all, we need to create that file. So I'm going to quickly create a very simple Python file. You don't need to worry if you don't know Python. I'm just going to print out hello world. Nothing uh, fancy. This isn't a Python tutorial after all. OK. Now that we have our file, let's look at how to run it using Docker. So first of all, the Docker container, which we're going to create from the Python image, is going to need access to the hello world.py file. In order to do that, we're going to use something called volumes. Basically, what volumes mean is there's a way for us to mount a certain directory from the host machine to the file system of the container. In this case, here I'm specifying that I want to mount the present working directory of the current machine, which is the folder in which I'm currently, I, I am currently in the terminal. And I want to mount it onto the folder slash src of the container. Next, I'm specifying with a dash dash rm uh, flag that I would like the container to be fully removed after it finishes executing. For now, let's ignore this flag in order to see what happens. There we go. Next, I'm specifying which image I want to use. In this case, I want to use the Python image with the tag or version number three. And finally, I need to specify what I want my container to do. What should it run? So I'm going to run Python and I'm specifying the location of the file. Remember, although it is located in my Docker folder on my machine, I have mounted this folder onto the slash SRC folder. So the file isn't going to be in slash docker slash hello world.py. It's going to be located in slash src slash hello world.py. Let's run this command and see how it works. It's saying that it can find the Python 3 image locally. So it went ahead to the Docker repository, pulled that image, and then it will be able to use it whenever we want to start a new Python 3 container. So it doesn't have to download it from the repository each time. It just needs it, needs it once, and then it can, it can use it however many times it needs to. And there we go. The image has been downloaded. The container has been run. 
and as you can see we received the output we expected hello world now let's check and see if we have any containers hmm, interesting we don't see the container because it has finished running and as such it not displayed when you just run docker container ls if you want to see all containers you need to run docker container ls a and here we can see our container it has an id uh, we can see that the image of the container is python 3 we can see what command has been run when it has been created and when it has exited what the status of the container is docker also assigns random names to our containers so for example this container received this name so how do we remove this container well very easily we can just do docker container rm for remove and you can either specify the container id or the name in this case i'm going to use the id now if you if we are on docker container ls a we can see that we don't have any containers at all okay now let's change our python file a little bit in order to make it run forever so again i'm gonna uh, edit the same file and before we print hello world i'm gonna add an infinite loop basically making the uh, the python interpreter run and run and run forever that's all you need to care about okay now let's run our uh, our container again and as you can see it's running and running and it's never actually gonna get to printing hello world but now what we can do is we can create a new terminal window and now if you run docker container ls let me make that uh, a little bit easier to read there you go you can see that our no uh, our new container hopeful margulis here is running just fine its status is up 21 seconds ago now let's try and remove this container rm and this time let's use its name error response from day one you cannot remove a running container so it's not allowing us to remove the container because it is running so we have to stop it first docker container stop and the name it's gonna take a few seconds for it to stop executing and afterwards we should be able to remove it now if we run docker container ls you'll see that no container uh, pops up but if we do ls a you'll see that the container is still there there its status is exited so now we should be able to run docker container rm and the name and the container has been removed we can check that indeed we don't have any more containers whatsoever now let's uh, change the file back from the other terminal here and remove the infinite loop there we go and now let's add the removal flag to the command so that's dash dash rm so that the container will be automatically removed after it finishes executing 
So we get hello world. If you run Docker container ls a, you'll see that there's no container there because Docker automatically removed the container after it has finished executing. Now, a nice uh, convenience function or command which you can use is this command, assuming you have many containers which may or may not be running or may have different status and you want to just remove all the containers which you have on your machine, you can run this command in order to remove them. So let's exemplify. Let's run Docker run hello world a few times without specifying the RM flag. So I'm going to run it three times. And now if I do Docker container ls, I don't get any containers because they have finished executing. But if I do ls-a, you can see that we have three containers uh, which are currently exited. So if we run our magic command, and then list on the containers, you can see that all of them are gone. Great. Now let's take a look at interacting with the container. There's going to be situations in which you will want to go inside the container and do some things yourself, uh, mostly for testing purposes, but there can be many other reasons why you'd like to do this. So let's see how that works. We're going to start by running the Python interpreter from the Python image. So in order to do that, we're going to run this command. Oops, sorry. So docker run dash it, that's a new flag which we haven't seen before, dash dash rm, just as before, ensuring that the container is going to be removed after we finish working with it, and then Python 3. So this is the image, and because we're not specifying any command to run, it's going to run the default command, which in this case is the interpreter. And the dash it flag means that we want our container to be interactive. We want to be able to interact with it. So let's see how this works. Copy. Paste. And now we are inside the Python 3 interpreter in our container. Again, if we open a new terminal and run Docker container ls, you'll see that we indeed have a container running called useful alien. Okay. And this is indeed a Python interpreter. We can do some basic math in order to see that it is working. And I can run the exit command in order to exit from the container. You can also run bash or the terminal shell inside your containers. So let's do that. The only difference from the last command is I'm specifying that I want to run slash bin slash bash as the command for the container. And now we can actually start taking a look inside the container. So we are in the file system of the container. You can see that if I, for example, change over to the bin directory and list all the files and directories in this folder, there's not that many things which are in this image. Again, that's because Images are designed in such a way as to only have why they, what they absolutely need in order to do what they need to do. In this case, this is what the software vendors for Python decided was important software for their interpreter. So, for example, many uh, Linux distributions usually come with a command called less. 
In this case, less doesn't exist because the Python uh, software vendors decided that less was not important uh, for their image. Okay. We can run the Python interpreter from inside the shell, just as we did before, just to verify that Python indeed is working in this uh, container. In order to exit the container, I'm going to hit Control D. Okay. Uh, what else is there to do? Now that we've seen the Python image, let's also take a look at a different image. In this case, Node.js. So, just as a sanity check, let's run the uh, Python image again and check if it has the node uh, system on it. So now I am inside a Python container, and if I run node, indeed, the command is not found, just as I expected. Now let's run node. In this case, I chose the image as node latest, so the latest version of the node image. And again, I'm going to run the shell bash uh, as the command, because I want to do a little bit of snooping around in the image. OK, so now we are in the container. And again, we can go over to the bin folder. And you can see that, as a matter of fact, the node people decided they, de they need a different set of software for their project in comparison to the Python people. Just to uh, check that we are actually inside the working node image, I can run node. And again, I can do some basic calculation to prove to you that it is, in fact, working. OK. but. If something interesting, if I run Python, that also works. So the node people decided that Python was important for their image, so they included Python in their image. You just saw that uh, earlier, the Python people decided that node was not important for their image. OK, so this was a basic introduction to the most important commands in Docker. We covered how to get images, how to check installed images, how to check containers, how to remove containers and images, and how to run containers, how to decide if they're interactive or not, how to decide to, if a container should be removed after it finishes executing or not, how to use volumes, how to choose images, and how to choose what command a certain container should run.